Hi, I'm uh, Magnus Gatten. I'm a documentary filmmaker from Malmö, Sweden. And I'm here at the Berlinale with the film Nelly and Nadine. And this is a film about family secrets. And it's a film about discovering a big, big love story between the women Nelly and Nadine, who are meeting in the worst of circumstances in Christmas 1944 in a concentration camp. Yeah, there were so many things with the... Nadine. Nadine et avec ma grand-mère au Venezuela. Peut-être je devais avoir quatre ans. On y allait régulièrement. Pour moi, c'était on allait chez ma grand-mère, elle habitait avec quelqu'un d'autre. Je sais juste qu'elle était dans le camp, qu'elles se sont rencontrées dans le camp et que après elles ont vécu ensemble au Venezuela. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean-Bord Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film Nelly and Nadine. Hello, Magnus. Welcome to the Teddy Award. Welcome to the Berlinale. Um, we are very glad to have you here and and have a and have a talk about about Nelly and Nadine. Um, when did you start working on this project? How did this uh, this project came to be? I, it's actually a, a quite a long story. Uh, you know, I've been doing very different kinds of documentaries, music documentaries, social documentaries. Uh, yeah. I've been traveling all over the world to doing documentaries. And one of the things I did was to, uh, to, to watch an old film reel from 1945 that was shot in my hometown in 1945. And you see survivors from the concentration camps. They arrive to to Sweden and they arrive to freedom. And I've been been uh, trying to find out in this film reel who are the people, who are these survivors that I see beautifully shot in this film reel. Um, and there, for the first time, I saw a face that really fascinated me, and that was the face of Nadine. But that was in, in, in 2007, and then I, I, did, uh, I did actually do two films that was based on the same archive material that I was trying to investigate the, the secrets of this, this film reel. And when I was showing the second one of these two, which is called Every Face Has a Name, I was showing it in, in Paris in mm. uh, November 2016. And bef just before the screening, I was approached by a couple, a farmer couple, who had a farm in northern France. And they, they approached me and said, we have some material. We actually have the big story about the Nadine that you see in, in the old film reel. And then I had a meeting with them, and then I realized that they had an amazing story. And they also had uh, in their attic at the farm, yeah. had an unopened archive with film reels, letters, uh, photos, and even a diary that Nelly had written about how she met Nadine in the camp. And then when you, you, you get that, you meet that kind of material, then you realize, okay, uh, this is a story I have to do. Right. So it's, in a way, it started many years ago, but I started shooting in 2017, and now I'm finally here for the premiere. Yeah. I, I was wondering, how did you find this archival material that was like at the, at the very beginning of the film? It was in really good condition as well. Yeah, that, that, that it's quite famous material. Uh, it's in the Swedish... Um, 
uh, National Television Archive, and it's also in the big Holocaust museums. They they have copies of it as well. Uh, so it's it's well known material. Uh, but I was the first one who tried to investigate what what is it really, and who are the people in this material. Yeah. Uh, because they were all like a mass of anonymous uh, survivors arriving, uh, but suddenly, I, I, you know, that's that's being a documentary filmmaker is that you sometimes get a little bit obsessed. You mm. need to find out something. So, I, I, and I needed to find out, but who are they? These faces, these women, uh, who who really are they? And uh, so, it's been a long journey, and that journey led me all the way to a love story. And that's the, right. the, the biggest right. gift of all documentary filmmaking is when you finally get a big love story. Yeah. It's it's a blessing. Yeah, it, it certainly sounds very miraculous how the story at the end kind of found you after researching this um, this particular footage for so long. Um, let's talk a bit about Nelly and Nadine. Let's talk about these two women. Uh, whose love story unfolds uh, in this in this film? What can we know about them? You know, the, the film is built on a family secret in a way. So when mm. the film starts, it's it's on the premise that we don't know much about them. Yeah, we have uh, Sylvie who lives at the farm, and it's her grandmother who is Nelly, and she obviously knows a lot about her grandmother. That the, the that she came from Brussels, Nelly, and she was a, a singer, sometimes an opera singer, but a classical singer who was making uh, tours all over Europe. Actually, she, she was a uh, quite well-known uh, singer, and she also did like radio concerts, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so for for Sylvie, her, her grandmother was a, a person she really admired and she knew a lot about her. The thing she didn't know about was what happened during the war. She know, she just knew that this was something very painful, this is something secretive, this is something you don't talk about. Um, so that that's how the film, it's built a little bit about with the starting point of a, of a family secret. And right. then you get to know more and more about Nelly, and also about her meeting with Nadine. And, and Nadine uh, was born in Madrid. Uh, she was the daughter of this, this Chinese ambassador in Madrid. And her mother was from Belgium. But she, she lived um, 10 years in Madrid, and then she moved back to China, where she belonged to the, the, the highest society in China at that mm -hmm. point. She uh, she did things that almost no one could do in, in China at that point. She was driving cars, she was uh, into sports, uh, she became an honorary colonel at the, 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 at the army in, in China and so on. And she worked for, uh, for even for one of the prime ministers in, in, um, hmm. in China in the 20s. And, and then she, uh, but she was able to travel and she was getting used to Europe and of course there was uh, an, a longing she had she wanted to belong to something different so she um, went back to Europe in 1933 uh, and then she was 30 years around 30 years old and there she went to Paris and went and then she uh, connected to Natalie Clifford Barney's uh, very legendary uh, literary salon and, and the life they, they led there. So she worked for Natalie Clifford Barney in Paris for, uh, for many years. And, and then the war came and then uh, they all were, 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 they moved to different places. And, and Nadine was like, most likely involved in some resistance uh, activities. And that's why she ended up in the concentration camp. And when it comes to Nelly, she was actually an agent. She was a secret agent mm -hmm. working as a courier, traveling around with documents. Uh, that's because she had those concerts, she could bring secret stuff mm -hmm. with her. So, um, and that's how they met in the camp. In, and that was in 
Christmas 1944. Right. It's um, it was also very um, very touching to see how Sylvie um, dives deeper and deeper into this family history and and how this story of these two women unfolds like the the hidden aspects of 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 their stories unfold for her and how she kind of collects the courage to to face this history that that she herself avoided uh for some time um how was it for you to um to kind of get gain the trust of sylvie that that she would be able to do this very intimate and very personal process on camera yeah it it was not obvious that that she wanted to do a film when i when i first met them um i think she wanted to to uh, to approach the story she wanted to confront uh, the secrets of the family she wanted to to know exactly who her grandmother was but she was quite reluctant in the beginning so uh, but but i after our meeting them in, in Paris, as I did in November 2016, I went down in April 2017, and there we talked about it. And she was not sure at that point either, but then she decided, okay, let's do it. I, I, I know I have to do it. And, and I mean, that, that's, that was a good starting point for me, because you want to be a part of a process when you do a film. You don't want to come in like 10 years later. And that was the thing with, with, with Sylvie. Once she gave me the trust, I could be there with her. When she started, in real time, I could film her while she was starting to investigate this story. And it's a story on many levels because it's yeah. uh, it's something that you don't, uh, the family didn't talk about. And it's, and it's not only about that her grandmother had a lesb lesbian relationship. It's about the war. Uh, it's about the concentration camps, and uh, and no one talked about it. It and it, it for her as a child and as a grandchild, it was very hard for her to be the one to to uh, say, "Okay, let's talk about it." So it, it took many years, yeah. uh, but now she's very happy that she did it. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that that it's it's also a very liberating experience in a way. Um, let's stay a bit with this. With, the, with these many layers of the film, because as you said, it's it's not only that uh, um, that her grandmother Nelly had a lesbian relationship, but also from those diary entries, a lot of the horrors of the of the concentration camps are revealed, um, and we also learn from the documentary that Nelly and Nadine worked together after the war to kind of organize all these memories, organize all the all the diary entries so it would be ready for publication, but that never happened. And the film kind of alludes to that part of the reason, at least, is this lesbian relationship that we see. So can you talk a bit about these two aspects of the film and how they create some sort of tension? Uh, abs absolutely. No, they, um, I mean, because the film also has one more layer. It's about being open and being secret about something that is you, 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 during the war, you were not able to, to, when you were in a concentration camp, you cannot talk about that you have a lesbian relationship. And you, and we have to remember that those times were in the forties, it was not easy to be open with your relationship. And they decided to move to South America in order to live more freely, Nelly and Nadine. But even in South America, they presented themselves, at least to other people, as, uh, um, as they were cousins living together. Hmm. So, um, we, we, so that's a kind of layer of, of uh, being open about things, but still not. And, and I think, my, and that's his theory, because we don't have them anymore, so we can discuss it with them. But I think the women wanted to be open. They lived together. 
and they finally decided to write uh, some kind of manuscript about what happened during the war. And, and in that script, they wanted to be as open as possible about their relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I don't know. I, I know they approached some people in the 70s with the script, uh, but it was never published. And it's, we, we have to remember, it's, it's times where you are not uh, encouraged to, to publish stories like that. Uh, it's, today we might f- feel that it's obvious that we can talk about everything, we can be open be, uh, uh, with who we are, etc. But those were not the times. Uh, so in, in a way it's a sad thing that they were never able to, to publish a book about a relationship. And, and I feel that's the historical triumph in a way that we now are able to give them their story. And it's Sylvie's, uh, it's because of Sylvie, of course, and also that we are able to do this film that we are giving their, uh, their story, their beautiful story are now laying open. Um, and and I, 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 I really feel it's, it's, it's a, it's a privilege to be a documentary filmmaker when you can, you can make this contribution to history, because it's it's on many levels, uh, LGBTQ history very very important, but also female pioneer history, right. uh, on on so many levels this is this is important. And I have to say, as as a, one little uh, side story, is that mm-hmm. we when we approached some TV channels when we were financing the film. Yeah. We had a conversation with the Polish national television and the woman there said, personally, I think this story is important, but I'm not able to, to broadcast this story in the Polish national television. Right. So this brings us to, to that this is not just cozy history. This is a, the real thing. I mean, uh, it, it's, it has a, a current importance, a film like this. Yeah, certainly. It does bear quite a strong urgency, actually. Um, and as you said, like, uh, very often, um, yeah, these stories are still not so easy to, to, to exhibit and present uh, in, in many places. And it's also just a, a hidden history um, in, in many ways. Um, I was interested about the the artistic and the and the creative approach that you took uh, for the filming. I mean, we spend a lot of time with Sylvie. Um, the archival footage is is very prominent in the film, and um, and um, there are a lot of um, interview segments as well uh, in inside of the film. But somehow there is this very um, tender, soft, um, evocative, and quite poetic organization of the whole thing and very uh, and a lot of newly shot material as well can you talk a bit about your artistic approach to to this whole film Mm -hmm. yeah it's i mean first i should say that we actually are really we are a big team behind Mm -hmm. this film uh it's not just something you 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 always say it's it's about having a team i have caroline the cinematographer I have Jesper, the uh, the main editor that we had, and, and he's so important. So it's a process of finding out how to tell the story. We knew that we wanted to find a poetic style of the film, we, and we also wanted to have some like live, current uh, feeling uh, in the film. It's not we are not just in history; we are also in real time. We are with Sylvie when she's. Uh, discovering things, uh, which always is important in in a, in a documentary. And it, I mean, there are so many questions and things you have to to uh, challenge when you do a film like this. For instance, when you hear a diary written in a concentration camp, what do you see? Do right. you see images from concentration camps? 
No, that does not work because the, the only images that exist are the ones that are from the liberation of the camps and you see piles of dead body, bodies, uh, etc. So you need to find a style that is that works with a diary, but also uh, in a way reflects the, the inner content of the diary. Because the diary is not only about mm -hmm. the horrors, it's on, also about, about uh, what she feels, uh, her, her dreams, her uh, hopes, uh, her feelings that she suddenly have for Nadine, etc. And, and, but very early on, I had this idea of a finding a poetic, um, poetic archive uh, layer in a way that we could work with together with with the diary, and and all the, the 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 images that we are working with for the diary are from the same film. It's from a film made by a Belgian master from the 1940s called Henri Stork. Mm -hmm. and it's from his film we we worked with. Uh, uh, with, with the material for the diary. And they, it was all shot in those years. It was shot in 42, 43, 44. So in a way they are uh, magically linked to, to, the, to those years and to, to the region as well. Uh, but we tried out so many things there. Uh, it took a long time before we really find the style of what could work. Yeah. What I found very um, fascinating and, and really impressive in the film is that um, both women's voices are very strongly present. Nelly through the diary entries and through this personal archive that Sylvie works through, but then there are these um, amateur footage from Nadine that's like a very important part of the film and then of course Sylvie herself is is very important and very crucially present and her voice is is very um very important to the whole story so i was wondering how did you navigate um these these voices of these women and how did you find a frame for it that it can that they all can be equally present while your voice on top of it as the director of this film is is of course also very prominent mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's 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 as i said it's a process um i mean for, for the first thing is that the perspective of the film is that we are with with uh, sylvie it's with her that we dive into a story and it's with her that we discover a family secret and we discover this uh, this fantastic love story so so that that so the film is edited from that perspective which means that she's the one reading the diary as well uh, and then we decided of course that we didn't want her to read the diary we wanted another voice because we wanted a voice that was could, could be Nelly's voice in the film because we mm. wanted people to really listen to what is written in this diary. So that, that was um, uh, something we also tested a lot to, to find the right voice who could, who could read this. Um, so there are, as you were saying, there are many uh, female voices and I, I would say that my my work as a director would be to to support the female voices. That's mm -hmm. my that's my mission uh, in in the film. Uh, I'm I'm myself. I'm I'm in in two occasions. I'm there with my own voice, but that is it's only because that's my perspective that I'm the one who is discovering that in in the old film reels from 1945. Otherwise, we are with with uh, Sylvie, who is. In a way, she has a, a super naivistic approach that she mm. she's a puzzle. She, well, I no one no one told me about that that they were a couple, uh, and she's she's uh, she's like a little child in a way sometimes. But that's that's her uh, the position she was put in by the family. No one talked about it. No one talked about the war. No one talked about the lesbian relationship. Um, 
but that, that that's also feels very good of course when you, you can end up the film can end up that she now she freely can talk about appreciate she can love the women and she can uh, really see what it is uh, and and sylvie is giving us like a gift it's a historic gift that sylvie is mm -hmm. giving us yeah absolutely um the the uh, this um this topic of the of the secrecy around around um, LGBTQ uh, love and LGBTQ relationships, it it not only surfaces through the relationship of of Nelly and Nadine, but as we see when they when they emigrated to to Venezuela and when they were living in Caracas, um, they had like quite a um, an intense social life there and there were other queer figures around them and we also see how the the families of 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 some of those people relate to this kind of history um and and that was i think that was a very um a very interesting way to tackle exactly this secrecy around it can you talk us can you talk a bit about this very particular part of the film. Yeah, it's it's a friend. It's an old friend of Nelly and Nadine that we meet. Um, yeah, he, he lives in uh, in Madrid because it's hard to be in Venezuela these days. Uh, right. And and you, you so I I don't feel I'm the one to out people in, in a film. Uh, but uh, when I met him and he talked about the women and he was very close to them and he loved them and he had all this social life with him. But then I realized when I met him and his daughter as well, Alexandra, that there was a story that also had to do about being uh, living in the open as who you are or you want to hide things or I mean, you make your own life choices and, and I'm not the one to judge any life choices that you do. Um, but there is something that I would became very interested in and, and it has to do with, with um, the, the power of, of being, um, being able to live live who you are, uh, live the life that you really want to live. And I think that that was the case of him, the, the, the man that we met in Madrid, and what well, was also the case of Nelly and Nadine. They were not able to live perfectly open. Otherwise, they would have not moved to Venezuela. They would have lived in Brussels, mm -hmm. most likely. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very happy about because that 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 brings us to uh, uh, to another current level in the film, because I think everyone, whoever you are, can be inspired by, for instance, this Alexandra, the daughter of the man in Madrid, when she yeah. says, I don't want to live my life um, uh, otherwise than in the open. I want to, to uh, um, yeah, ha have the life that Nelly and Nadine had. That, that's what she's saying. And so Nelly and Nadine actually was an inspiration for, for her to live yeah. her life as open as possible. Yeah. Well, if we, if we stay with this, this aspect of inspiration, Nadine was also an inspiration for, for other survivors uh, from, from the camps. Uh, mm -hmm. She saved many lives um, um, and we meet one of one of these survivors um, who was a little girl at the time uh, when they were um, in in Ravensbrück in the in the concentration camp and uh, she also shares a very intimate and very strong story how Nadine has and continues to have an impact on on her life can you tell us about this particular story mm -hmm. um yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating how uh, we we think that people are just historical figures, but in a way they they are still uh, affecting us, and that's the case of uh, of 
uh, a little girl that was she was a little girl in the camp she, her name was Irene and she was Jewish and she was there with her mother and uh, in the Ravensbrück uh, when it came to the liberation it was very important that you were able to get on on the Red Cross buses and um, uh, Nadine knew about that so she Nadine was able to to uh, get uh, Irene and her mother on a bus, which was sent to Sweden. And, and maybe she shaved, saved their, uh, their lives. Um, and, and the thing is then that this, this woman, uh, this little, little girl, Irene, who later beca became an old lady who now lives in South Africa, that she named her daughter after Irene. And that is, a, that's fantastic, of course. Uh, now I'm spoiling the film, but I'm hoping that people are actually they have seen the film. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, but there there are so many small many small stories in a film like this, and there has to be like a richness of stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's it has to do with the, uh, the 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 perspective of the story. It's not me, the director putting my voice on, on the film and, and telling the stories for people. These stories are actually happening during the film. It's, it's Sylvie talking to this Irene in South Africa. Uh, so we get the real voices telling things as in the same way as, as the, in the diary we have, we actually have Nelly's voice Absolutely. because, uh, because otherwise you, you would have like a, a typical historical documentary where you have like a narration, mm -hmm. a BBC voice telling and telling about uh, everything like a god godfather. Uh, so it's so important for me to have the actual actual voices of yeah. the people in the film telling the stories. Yeah. At the end, it's basically and and it works on multiple levels in the film. Um, the power of love in a way. I mean, it's very obvious in the case of Nelly and Nadine, who had to go through and, and whose love was born in a, in a very, in a place of horror, really. Um, but they persevered. And, and as we learned from uh, Nelly's diary entries, it was basically this love and this relationship that kept her going and, and, and gave her the hope and and the belief to that better times will come and that she can she can push through all of all mm. of those challenges mm. we see this love uh, the love of sylvie for for her grandmother and 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 this curiosity driven by love to to really learn the full picture about this woman to understand fully uh, the the grandmother um, so can you talk a bit about how love infuses this entire film. And I assume that in some way or another, it's also your love is somehow woven into this, into this mix. Yeah, that's very true. And it's not always that you're able to, uh, to uh, do a film about love like this. But I usually say that when you do a film, uh, and I think many filmmakers will agree with me, is that you have to love the people in your film. In a way, you have some kind of hippie philosophy. Mm. I love the people I, I, I do the film about. It doesn't mean that I, I, I'm, I don't... Sometimes I need to challenge them as well, but you can challenge people that you love. Uh, That's for sure. So, so, uh, so in a way, I mean... You know, when you do a film, it takes some time to realize wh what is the film about, because there are you discover so many levels. Even I, and the people around the film, we discover new levels in the film, and it's when I meet the audience and when 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 I meet people like you, I suddenly realize what is this film about. But in a way, it's a film about the power of love. Uh, because that goes with Sylvie, her, her search for, for the truth about her uh, grandmother. That's because of her love of her grandmother, exactly as you're saying. And why do they survive in the camp? Nelly survives because of her love to Nadine. 
Uh, so the power of love is uh, is is shown in this film, and and uh, that's the perfect answer. I, I know we need more than love in this world. We need need justice um, and other things as well. But we need a lot of love in this world, and I'm happy that I, I, I could make this contribution. Right, and I think we we need a lot of love, especially in in times that we that we all collectively experience right now and in the very recent past. Magnus, thank you very much for for being here with us and talking with us about this extraordinary documentary film. Um, I wish you all the best for for the Berlinale and. Uh, and um, and yeah, I hope that uh, the film will reach many, many audiences even after the festival. Well, thank you very much for having me.